Welcome back. In the last video, I changed the hard drive space on my server by upgrading the up backup hard drive and also upgrading the internal hard drive, which handles the data and the client computer backups. Unfortunately, I did the intro of the video. In that intro, I mentioned I was going to use a Cronus True Image to clone the hard drive. And then I went into a separate section of the video where I showed you how to use the program. Un uh, the unfortunate part is, is when I had that process going on, it took a while for it to, to do its thing. And I decided to look back at the footage that I had recorded for the first part of the video and decided I wasn't that happy with it. So I re-recorded it since I had some time. When I got done with the cloning, I noticed that I didn't really need to do that. And I had to actually initialize the hard drive through the server and set it up like a new drive and go through this whole thing that I just wasn't anticipating. So, and they ended up having to do the video kind of a third time over because the initial recorded uh, intro, the second recorded intro, and then having that footage of the clone didn't really match up right. So I ended up 86ing it and just went ahead and did the video showing you how I transferred the files over manually using the server's interface because it's not just like you're copying the files, you're actually telling the server to move the folder and it rechanges the location and it's a whole little thing it has to do. So cloning the hard drive would be kind of counterintuitive to what I needed to do. But I still had the actual footage. So I decided to take that footage and upload it into another video just to show how the cloning process works, even though it was completely irrelevant to the actual initial server video and the project that I did. But like I said, I still have the data. So I said, let me, let me just film a new intro, which is what this is here. I'm going to go into the actual video of the hard drive being cloned. And I wanted to mention this because during that video, I mentioned hard drive backup and, and all these different things that you wouldn't do in a normal hard drive cloning. You would actually just go through the same procedures, but this is if you're cloning your data drive. Like you, uh, you have an SSD as your main drive and you have, let's say a one terabyte drive as your secondary drive for your data. And you want to upgrade that to a two terabyte or four terabyte, something like that, and you want to clone it. The particular procedure I line up would actually work with that. But if you're trying to do the actual boot disk, like you're trying to clone the actual SSD to a bigger one, or you get the idea, it wouldn't work. You'd have to go through a little bit of a different procedure. But at any rate, I figured I would mention that now, and we're going to go into that right now. Okay, I got both hard drives hooked up to my computer. We can see the local disk H here is the four terabyte backup drive, and the server backup 2TB is the two terabyte current backup drive. And we're just verifying that they're both open. Uh, we do have them uh, access to them here in Windows Explorer. And you may have seen the little message popping up that one of my hard drives is getting full. You can see I have 93.3 gigabytes left out of 931, which is also the one terabyte drive in this computer here. So once I get the drives backed up and moved around and whatnot, I'll be able to take a lot of this off of here and put it onto the actual server itself. But anyway, we're going to start the Acronis program here. Now, this is the Acronis True Image Western Digital Edition, which I mentioned you can download from their website. Now, when this comes up, I will mention that it actually jumps right off the top of the screen here for some unknown reason. And I actually uh, tried different monitors here just to make sure you know it wasn't the resolution that I had set to. But at any rate, I'm going to come in here and show you what we're going to click on. Now, we're going to go to Clone Disk which is going to open up another window. And on this window here, we have two options. We have automatic and manual. Now they recommend doing automatic, but I'm going to go ahead and do manual. Now this shows you the two drives that we have available. Disk four is the two terabyte drive. Disk five, uh, disk six, I should say, is the four terabyte drive. So when I click next, um, this is the source drive I should mention. This is where we're coming from. So I'm gonna click disk four, so that's the smaller drive. I wanna hit next. It's going to do this little check here, which will take a few minutes and I'll have to come back once it's back up on the screen. Once it's done reading, you'll get an, a list of the available drives as the target. Now this is what we're copying to. You'll see disk six is available, and that's the one we want. 
So we'll go ahead and click that, then hit next. And it's going to tell you that this destination hard drive has data on it, which it doesn't. It's been freshly formatted, but it's going to um, basically format it itself. So anything that's on there now, it's going to give you this message regardless. So when you click OK, it's going to go ahead and do some more reading here. And again, this will take a few moments. Now that this has come up with the next uh, option, we're going to click the bottom one here. Copy partition is use disks as a non-system GPT style. This will make this drive not bootable, but that's fine because we're not booting to this drive anyway. So once you click next, we're going to go here and set manual for the um, data uh, moving method. Uh, the basic options are here is as is, which is copying it one to one. Proportional, which is going to shrink the drive and the manual should let us set the actual overall image size. I'm going to let this do its reading thing and come back to you once again. Once the next window comes up, you'll see the settings that the new drive is going to have. Now this particular situation, it gave me a unalloc uh, unallocatable 100 megabyte section, which of course is going to be where all the um, you know table of contents and like all that kind of stuff is for the drive. And then the remainder of it will be the actual backup drive. And you can see from the green bar here, it's a little less than halfway full once it's done, which is perfect. And then what I want to do here is if I click on the top option here, I can go ahead and change the partition label. We're going to make that server backup 4TB instead. And this will, of course, allow you to change the partition as well. But we're going to leave it as is. Now, that's the reason why I went with the manual mode, whereas before the advanced mode just copied it one for one, and whatever size the partition was, it would copy over to the new drive, and then you'd have basically a partition, partitionable drive space at the end that you can go ahead and partition or add it to the existing drive. But I wanted to do that off the bat, so I just went with the advanced mode. So then once you click next here, it's going to show you the before and the after which before it shows you it's full, which it's not full. That's just how it's formatted from the original setup. And then this is the new drive after. Once you click proceed, it's going to go ahead and start doing its thing. Now this will take some time, um, probably a few hours. So of course, I'm just going to let it go. And when I get everything done with that, of course, I'll come right back again. And I'm just going to repeat this process to the uh, other two drives here, which I'll show you are sitting on the desk kind of getting ready. Now these are the ones we're going from and to, and then this is going to be the next from, and it's going to go to that one. And then obviously, like I said, this is going to come out of the case and so on and so forth. But once I get everything done, I will come back with that. All right, now that you watch that, we can say that that worked for what it needed to work, but didn't work for the particular instance that it needed to work with. I had to go another way about it. So the clone itself did work when I actually plugged it into the computer. I opened it up and everything was one for one. And if I was just taking out the old drive and putting that one in its place in a regular PC, it would, it would work perfectly. So with that, you know, it's you tend to record this video and sometimes it's, you come across some situations where it didn't come out that great, but you still have the footage and uh, you don't want to see that go to waste. So, you know, I won't be doing this too often, it's just one of those things that I have a lot of stuff here that I, I do film sometimes and it doesn't actually get onto YouTube. But with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. The next video I have coming up should be pretty interesting. I'm going to actually dig out those meters that I mentioned a couple of videos ago and we're going to start taking a look at all that stuff. And uh, that'll probably be sometime in the next couple of days here. So expect to see that video up towards probably the end of the week I'd imagine. And as always. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. My channel seems like it's growing pretty quickly and I love that. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, I would appreciate if you did that. Also, please leave a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I haven't mentioned it maybe in recently, but if you do give me a thumbs down, just tell me why. I would love to hear why. Uh, that way it helps me improve future videos. Well, with that, I want to say thanks for watching. See you next time.